Welcome to Shovelware Diggers. Our dig team is currently excavating the Softkey Shareware 2000 Hit Games 2CD Collection. You can find a link in the video description listing the entire directory structure of this archive. Here's what our diggers have for week 278. For more information on how to join the dig team, simply follow the Patreon link in the video description. Now, without further ado, let's get to it. First up from Joseph Adams, we have wingames backslash gg backslash taz. So are we about to have a game that's about the Tasmanian devil from, you know, Warner Brothers cartoons and stuff? Because that's what I'm getting the impression from, from that name, but could be wrong. So where is it? Um, there it is, Taz. So we got an executable, an installer, got a separate setup section, which seems to happen quite a lot with some of these things. Um, got a lot of write files. Consumer dot write, um, license, order, readme, help, and a write file for the game itself. Uh, I guess we'll go readme first. So thanks for your order to install this game. Double click on install at exe. Um, doesn't let us really know what's going on here, except that there's a Star Graphics Corporation involved or something. Hmm. Well, let's just check out the right file instead. Okay, so Taz, a Windows game in which there are falling triangles that one tries to fit together to form shapes of the same color. There's a different shape for each of 14 difficulty levels, and one has to deal with new combinations of color triangles at each new level. By switching off the shapes, Taz becomes a different game where the player tries to place triangles of the same color next to one another. Huh. So this is kind of like some sort of... Yeah, it's it, it, not quite Tetris, but maybe more like Columns? I don't know. Okay, and the help file actually shows us the controls. So left arrow to move left, right arrow to move right. Um, five key, so that's immediately suggesting that we should be using the numeric keypad for this. So the five key will be a rotate, up arrow is also a rotate, okay? And down arrow is to drop. And then spacebar toggle drop, i.e. one press drops the piece, and if the spacebar is pressed again before the piece has touched the bottom, it starts falling at the original speed. Okay, that's a, an interesting way of doing it. So you press spacebar once to start dropping at higher speed and press it again to stop dropping. You know, I, I'm kind of thinking to myself that the reason why they did it that way is probably because they have no idea how to make it so you can hold keys properly in Windows, but... Because, yeah, keyboards do not work like a typical game controller or anything. You have to, there's special considerations for being able to hold keys at a time or multiple keys at a time. Um, what's the order say? How much did they want for this is the better question. Um, so apparently Taz is one of the most expensive programs they have here because this is supposed to be $30 software. Not to mention $3 for shipping and handling and $7 for all foreign orders. Yeah, so this had better be a really good game at that price, but I guess enough looking at these things, let's actually get into it. Okay, so Star Graphics, trademarked, Game Crafters, okay. And the game immediately starts playing. Does it maximize? Uh, uh, sort of? <laughs> That's an interesting way of maximizing. So, the background maximizes, but the main game stays centered, so I guess that counts? Okay, I turn the sound on, we got different shapes, I guess. Oh wait, there it goes. So we got a shape thing that we're trying to go for. There's a little window we can move around. Um, piece preview. Why do I have to hit these twice for them to go on? That's kind of weird. Okay, so we know the next piece now. What about starting level? So we can start between 1 and 14, but we're just going to go 1 to start. Um, new game, pause, high scores. No one in the high scores, because we just... Um... That is so weird. It's like certain aspects of the game are not functioning until after doing other things. Better keep that in mind, just in case other things fail when we try this. Okay, so new game. So... We've got our piece here. We can rotate it into different orientations. And we can drop it. Okay, so are we trying to make that shape with 
Does it have to be the same color? Or can it be different colors? It's an interesting question. Oh, uh, and also once it touches down, you can't move it anymore. So I guess the toggle is going to be very helpful for that. Okay, so if we drop this like this, okay, no, so the shape that you make has to be all the same color from the looks of it. So that is good to know. Okay, so I think I can make the shape right here. If I do, okay, and it made a sound effect of some kind. Um, okay, I'm not sure how this is gonna work. Like, can we squeeze this in? Yeah, we can, cool. And then just drop. Yeah, that's a very weird sound it makes when it moves on. Okay, so the shapes we're trying to make for this next level here are a little more interesting. So, not entirely certain how we're gonna go about doing this one. Yeah, the next piece coming down should do the trick. So if I do rotate that around like, or no, wait, no, it's because the triangle at the bottom has to be pointing upwards. Well, maybe if I fit it into here. So if I do slide it there, that didn't count for some reason. So I guess because that didn't count down below, whatever shape you make, it has all the, the gaps in the shape have to be there. So you can't just make it, you can't just arbitrarily put things down. There has to actually be, um, the proper spacing there. So that's kind of annoying. Okay, but I think we can do this. So if we put that one there and then move that one in like that, that got rid of all the yellow pieces. Okay, so if I'm if I'm seeing this right, if I move this blue one, this blue triangle that's dropping right now into position to make the proper shape, it should get rid of that other blue triangle down in the corner. And it did. Okay, that's weird, but if, if that's the way they want to play it, then that's the way it's going to work. So I really don't have to worry about where I drop this particular blue one, because as soon as I fit this one into place, then it should get rid of all the blues that are currently on the board. Yep. Let's squeeze it in like that, so we can try to make something happen with the reds here, although I don't think this is going to work, but... We will see. Okay, so what I have to do is slide this red one underneath, like that. Oh no, wait, those triangles have to be pointing downwards. Oh. This is actually kind of tricky. Well, not just because of the fact that the pieces keep building up, but from like mistakes and everything, but just trying to sort of conceptualize the fact that these pieces are gonna stick where I put them. Okay, so I'm trying to get, get with the green ones down here. See if I can get a, the green shape going. Maybe I should have tried yellow instead because it's giving me a lot of yellows now, but whatever. Okay, we've got a red triangle coming up. So for the moment I drop this red triangle here, it should get rid of all of the red pieces. Okay. Yep. Also, something else I should note is that when you're dropping a piece, you have no control over its movement left or right. So you have to stop dropping it if you want it to move left or right. Okay, I've almost made the shape again with the yellow pieces, but I'm starting to build up a lot of extra space here. Wasted space. It's not boating well. So yeah, if I drop this one here, I don't think it's going to count. Oh no, there it goes. Wait, this is the end of the demo. To order, see the readme, thanks. Um... And if you hit OK, it quits the program. So that was Taz, a very interesting take on a falling block puzzle game. Um, I don't know if it's worth $30, but the fact that it is as unique as it is, like, it's definitely interesting for when it came out. I mean, you can even see from the little demo here that in later levels, you may actually have pieces that have multiple colors put together at first. Oh, wait, I can actually move these right now. Um... Okay, that's interesting, because we didn't get any multicolored pieces almost pretty much the entire time we were playing. Huh. But yeah, it's an interesting take on a falling block puzzle game, with everything sticking together. Um, 
The controls are a, take a little getting used to. Not because the controls are bad, like the controls are pretty normal, it's just the fact that dropping kind of locks things out a bit. Like not completely, you can actually still move a little, but because it drops so fast, there's like almost no time to move things in place. But yeah, it's a neat game, I just don't know if it's worth $30. Next up from Michael Madsen, we've got win games backslash board backslash checker. Well, definitely gonna have a checkers game here. So where are we? Checker. Um, we've got a single small executable and a file id.diz, which says checkers, good implementation of the classic board game. And that is literally all there is to this file id.diz. Okay then, so checker.exe. Hmm. Just looking at it right now, I think this is going to maximize, so does it maximize? Yep. Yeah, I just had a feeling just from the weird window size and the way the pieces were stretched out, like, horizontally like that. Like, normally when you see a checkers board, it's squares, not very much rectangles. <laughs> so that's why I had a sneaking suspicion the maximize was going to work. So apparently we have a freeware checkers program, copyright 1990 by Gregory Thatcher. Game instructions. Checkers is played by two on the same board that is used for chess with pieces in the form of discs. The pieces are called checkers or draws. All the checkers are alike in form but come in one or two colors, red or black. On a monochrome monitor they will appear as light and dark. One player moves the black pieces, the other moves the red. Okay, so yeah, typical checkers game here. So I guess the important question here is... Okay, so there is skill levels, so that means there probably is, yep, a one-player mode. And there's also two-play and auto-play. So I can either be black or red. And... Got an about screen. Let's set it to novice, and let's do new game. No, oh, didn't really have to. So, my move. So let's move... Oh, you just click, you don't click and drag. Okie dokie. Computer makes a move. And then I'm gonna go like this. Peter's gonna go like that. Then let's see. Let's do this. Okay, so trying to set myself up for something here. Um, <laughs> I think. Let's do. Let's move a piece here. See what the computer decides to do. Okay, Peter's making some moves. Instead, go like this. Oh, that was really dumb. <laughs> that was exceptionally dumb. Or, you know, I say it was exceptionally dumb, but here's the thing. That piece is kind of trapped down there, as long as I don't move any of these. So, let's do... Let's move it up like this. Computer's going to make a move. Okay, so I'm going to force him to take that piece. And that allows me to move this one up here. Okay, so this that actually works well for me. And now he's going to move there because that's going to force me to take his piece. The question is, which way do I want to take it? Um, okay, so I'll get my crowned piece there. And now the computer's moving his crown piece out, but... Not going to make it easy for him to do much with that. So let's try moving this piece up here. Okay, so we've kind of got an interesting situation forming here. So I'm going to move my piece here. And then I'm going to move this one like this. And move it again. Okay, so I have to jump. Computer has to jump. And now I have to jump. Peter's going to move. Okay, I see what's about to happen here. Oh, but, uh, but now the computer gets to take that one. Oh, uh, boy. No, I think that was a bad idea. Because now I'm going to have to move this one. Peter's going to be taking it, and yeah. This is not going so well for me. So I don't think I've got a lot of hope here. Yeah, I'm done. <laughs> Game over. So that was Checkers, Freework Checkers game. It plays fine, maximizes fine. 
Yeah, nothing wrong with this one. And we're ending with a team dig today from Cameron Armstrong and Very Softwares, DOS games backslash arcade 3 backslash Xfire. Now, wouldn't it be something if this was a freaking Crossfire clone? Like the board game Crossfire? I actually used to own that. <laughs> um, the funny thing is, I still have the pieces to the Crossfire game, like all the marbles and the little the little pucks, but I don't have the actual board anymore. <laughs> so yeah, I'm not entirely certain how that happened. Um, but all we have here is just a single small executable, so whatever, X-Fire. So X-Fire by Frank Bileski. Might have got that right. From 1991, arrow keys move ships, but that went automatically. Uh, okay, I'm gonna have to, gonna have to go back to DOS. <laughs> Try that again. So, sp arrow keys move ships, spacebar fire, press escape when tired playing, VJ or multi-page EGA. This is experiment, multi-page video animation. Also wanted to game that wouldn't get too hard for my kids. Program is free, copy and distribute unaltered freely. Okay, so we got a freeware game, which clearly involves moving around. Ooh, there's some weird things going on with the video buffering. Cause like, f yeah, that flicker looks like a page flipping issue or something. Let me um see if altering the cycles count might help that. Okay, if I set the cycles count really low, then it's not so bad, but now it kind of feels like maybe the game's a little too slow. Or maybe this is the speed the game's supposed to play? I'm not quite sure. But yeah, it seems like what we're trying to do here is shoot shots to hit the enemies that are coming out of the corners. It doesn't seem to be a good way to tell when a particular enemy is going to come out, like which enemy is next. Okay, and they also are capable of shooting your shots down, so that's good to know. So yeah, it seems like the different enemies can shoot at different rates and such. I don't know if there's like a limit to the number of lives we have. I don't see a lives counter. It almost seems like this is just going to go on forever. Okay, and you can only have one shot in the air at a time, so that's good to know. Okay, two enemies left and we move on to the next level. Okay, so level two. Um, this doesn't really seem like it's going to be any different. Yeah, as far as I can tell, this is pretty much the same as level one. Although you can kind of... You can kind of shoot it better than the enemies can. Kind of. So when it comes to, like, uh, the player and the enemy facing down each other on the same, like going straight towards each other, the player seems to have the advantage, like watch. Yeah. <laughs> because the enemy doesn't shoot instantly when they see you, so that gives you an advantage. I should probably also mention the controls here. I'm not holding any keys down. You tap to move in a particular direction. Then you can tap to anticipate a corner. Now you can tap like way in advance for anticipating corners. But if you tap the opposite direction that you're moving in, you stop moving. Like that. And then you also start facing the other direction for your shots. See, I'm not really sure there's much more to this thing. It just seems to be like an extremely basic game. But I guess that's what the goal was. Make something extraordinarily simple that... Pretty much anyone could play. Now you can't lose because there doesn't seem to be a lives count. Let, let, let's test that. Let's see if I can actually get a game over. If that's even possible. Yeah, I've been taking quite a few shots to the player here. Lost quite a lot of lives by this point, and it doesn't seem like it's going to end anytime soon. So yeah, there is no end to this game. The whole idea is to just shoot down the opponents, and if you happen to die, Oh well, you just keep going. So yeah, that was X-Fire. This is what I would call the bare minimum <laughs> for like a proper game. But at the same time, like the goal was to make something simple so that young kids could play it. And this is definitely simple. So mission accomplished. <laughs>